Welcome back to basically exactly where we left off in the previous episode. Now in this episode, I'm thinking about building a gold farm with a bartering setup. And we actually do have a good reason. Remember when I said we make this really cool space station that'll be like a museum for the server down in this void area? But well, we found a design. Now this design is a replica of the International Space Station that's in orbit right now. And I think it looks extremely cool. Now, what we noticed immediately is that we're gonna need an extremely large amount of quartz to build this. And mining quartz is getting really old, so I kinda wanna make a piglin bartering setup to do it for me because you could give gold to piglins and they have a chance of giving you quartz. But to have a piglin bartering setup, we need gold. And to get gold, we need a gold farm. Now this design might seem extremely familiar to you as it is one of the most popular designs out there. It was designed by El Mango, works amazingly. And it's actually kind of hilarious how simple a farm like this actually is. So if I go to survival mode and then I hit one of these pigmen, they aggro me. And then we have alarm pigmen on the side there. And if we stand here, they'll just run towards me and they'll die to entity cramming with minecarts and I'll get AFK XP and a ton of gold. Now the way they stay angry at me is that these alarm pigmen can see me. So they're always angry at me as the player. So they trigger all the ones around them to stay aggro and it continues the aggro chain. But enough about how the farm works. Let's build it. So here's the completed farm on the server. Now, if you look down, you may notice that um, it looks a little bit different from what you saw on the time lapse. Well, that's because oh, brother, I forgot to hit record. But I'll give you a quick tour right now of what you missed. So up at the top here where we see this pile of pigmen, we have the farm that I just showed off. You just stand in the center and you just get levels and over in this corner there is a gold ingot to the piglin bartering setup this does exactly what the lever says all gold ingots we get from the farm go directly to the piglin bartering setup now the piglin bartering setup down here has eight piglins in basically these cells where we dispense gold that comes through from the farm or we can put the gold in this chest and they will pick it up like this guy's doing now. Look at the gold, throw out the items, and then it will be picked up by this hopper line and out onto this little ice road that we have here to push the items around and into a sorting system. And it's actually kind of amazing how simple these cells are to make. Basically, the gold comes in and then it gets dispensed onto this pressure plate. And then when it is picked up, the pressure plate is unpowered which will power this torch and will dispense another piece of gold to this chopper. It's literally one redstone dust, but it works extremely well. If we come down here, we have the sorting system for the bartering setup. Over here, we have the main attraction, which is nether quartz. And after a night of AFK, we got about half a double chest. A little slow, but it's really nice to have nonetheless. And we also have obsidian, crying obsidian, nether brick, fire charges, ender pearls, spectral arrows, some random items in soul sand, blackstone, gravel, 
and then we store some of the miscellaneous stuff in here like fire resistance potions soul speed and this one we just kind of manually clear out so like we don't want any of the boots so i just throw them out every once in a while when it gets filled now because we're this server we wanted to make it a little extra complicated because we thought a normal gold farm and bartering set would be a little bit too boring so we decided to actually smelt all of the gold swords that we get from the pigment up there basically we have a stackable item filter right here and any swords that come through will be sorted down and into this hopper line now when the sword goes past this hopper it will trigger this long pulse extender which will enable the bamboo farm over here which will fuel the furnace array which is over here which smelts the swords for those of you who don't know if you smell a sword or some kind of tool it will break down into its nugget components. So that means if you smell like a gold chest plate, gold boots, gold sword, it turns into gold nuggets. And if you smell an iron sword, an iron chest plate or iron boots, it turns into iron nuggets. So we use that mechanic here, we smelt it, and then it goes into the sorting system. Now, does this really affect the rates that much? No, not really. So I just start the farm up so you can see the whole smelting process and sooner or later, we'll have a sword pass through and then this pulse extender will turn on. There we go. And now you could see that the bamboo farm is enabled. And this bamboo farm is a pretty basic design. It's just a flying machine that breaks the bamboo. And then we have a mine cart that goes underneath and picks it all up. And then all the swords will go into these furnaces here whenever we get them. Then it gets all smelted down right here and dispensed out into this powder snow block from this dropper and into the item collection system right here but yeah that's basically the entire gold farming setup it was not a horrible build didn't take very long and it is extremely useful for future projects but record specifically it's just not fast enough so that leads me to the next segment of this video so on this server we have two very nice perks but do you know what they all have in common they're all in the overworld because of this it makes it very difficult to make good nether farms. And that's why I started experimenting with the most efficient ways to make a 500 by 500 nether perimeter. So the first thing that I knew I had to figure out was a better way to build a world leader. Because clearing out the first like 70 blocks of the nether is just not feasible. So I went to the online world and I found this amazing design by Pixels. It is a 14 block tall world eater for the nether. Now, usually with world eaters, there's this issue with the TNT priming phase. Basically, when the TNT is lit, it needs to drop at least 50 blocks before exploding. And the entire point of a world eater is that we can drop the TNT and control when it explodes up to the point of accuracy where we remove about one layer at a time. And that allows it so we can get all liquids and not have any blocks floating in the middle of the perimeter. Now, the way this world eater got around it is the TNT doesn't fall while it's primed. It sits on this flying routine until it's just about to explode. Then it drops off, and then these sweepers are pushed in on the back. And this would work the same way as a normal world eater. The terrain would be here and the TNT would be blowing it up, and then we would have the sweepers removing any liquids. But what about ancient debris, you may say? There's a lot of that in the nether, and it can't be blown up. Well, I'm glad you asked. These sweepers are actually built to handle that. So let me place this ancient debris down to simulate it exposing ancient debris. Basically, this ancient debris won't be able to be blown up, as you can see here. And as the sweeper comes by, all it does is it just pushes it down. So that means when the entire world eater is finished, you'll just have a bunch of ancient debris at the bottom of the world near the bedrock. And you can just mine that up. And I think that is an amazing solution to the problem. So the world eater might look a little bit strange as it's like cutting in and out, but that's just because it's 500 blocks long. And as you can see, my computer can handle it all right. Now, I don't know about multiple people on a server, but I think this is efficient enough that our server could definitely handle it. Also, one more note, these two stations here would not be this close. This station would be 500 blocks away from this one. That way we get the 500 by 500 perimeter we want to clear out. But now we've run into another issue. We still need to clear out those 15 blocks in the nether. So how are we going to do that? Because mining it all, I did the math, it's like, three and a half million blocks. So we use this. Now this isn't the full scale, but this is a tunnel board designed by El Mango. And this is definitely the way to go. Basically you just hit this note block, TNT gets launched and then into the wall and bam. And the entire machine progresses forward. This is actually one of the best ways to get diamonds in the game right now. 
just have never built one up. The one catch though is we actually need to build two of them because it only clears out 11 blocks and we need 15. So we're going to need to build two of them and they'll go all the way across the top of the nether to make room for the world eater. And we're also probably going to make a smaller one that does the long way here to make room for the big one. But then there's one more thing I wanted to figure out. Up until recently, our witch hut perimeter had these really, really rough edges until I smoothed them out a couple episodes ago. Now, building this nether perimeter is gonna be a lot of work and I really wanna make it look good. So I wanted to try to figure out how I can make the walls smooth and clear out the trenches at a reasonable pace. I was kind of stumped for a while until I found this video by Shulkercraft. In that video, they showed that you can place water on the sides of the perimeter so that the TNT wouldn't blow it up. And then I thought, can I do that in the nether as well? And it turns out you definitely can. If we dig out a perimeter around the perimeter and then we f flood the wall with lava, with the lava we have from our lava farm, this would work the same as water. As you can see, when I blow up this TNT, the other side will not be damaged. So we have the damage on this side, but on this side, it's just a perfectly smooth wall. So that's how we think we're going to do it. And if you're curious how we're going to clear out the trenches, we're just going to make some TNT bombers that just throw TNT everywhere and dig down all the way to the bottom of the world. We're not doing anything fancy for that. There was one other idea I was toying with, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Basically, on two of the sides, we only need a three wide trench instead of a 15 wide trench. And these lava lakes are really a pain to clear. So what we could do is we could dig down with the trench makers until we reach lava level. And then we could build this quarry, a three strip quarry that would mine everything up and remove the lava on the th uh, three way strip. But I kind of decided it's probably not worth it. I mean, it's a lot of effort, but I think we could clear out the lava ourselves. And also I kind of want to save a quarry for another day. But a project like this is definitely going to require a lot of prep. And the first one being, a cobblestone farm. Yeah, that's right. We actually don't have a cobblestone farm on our server. So I thought back to a video I saw by Il Mango on the Sidecraft Blitz series. He built this basalt and cobblestone farm. So I tracked it down and I found it right here. And it is a really fast and relatively simple design. And as you can see, it produces a ridiculous amount of cobblestone. 18,000 items per hour to be exact. If you're curious what this command block does, it's just to set the um, incoming blocks as air so I can have this as a showcase. Another thing that we're going to need is a hostile mob cap at least for the nether because building these kind of advanced contraptions with tnt and all that kind of stuff if a gas comes by and blows one of those things up it's an absolute tragedy so i'm definitely going to try to work on a mob cap i think in the next episode and build that up in the nether but for now i think we should get this bad boy out of the way so back on the server i just put together all of the materials required for the farm that's probably incomplete i'm gonna have to come back a million times to get what i need so now all i gotta do is find a place to build it thinking right here might be pretty good i just need to make sure i can hook it up over there to the blockchain to go into the glass chamber all right yeah this could easily fit in this area but now where's the best spot to have it merge i think the best would probably to go up top have the blockchain go up and then into this one so it goes down like that but now i need to f figure out like the correct heights and everything like that all right i think this is definitely the height we should do it at because we could fit in the downwards um blockchain right here and there would be enough room Honestly, I bet this makes absolutely no sense, but when it's built up, trust me, it'll make more sense. As a tip, do not um, allow the farm to start running before you get the cobblestone to go where you want it to. All right, so after that little bam right there, um, the farm is actually done. All I need to do is place this note block here, which I will not do because I broke it last time, which will start the farm. But we need to put it in the infrastructure first to turn off and on the farm and how to deal with the cobblestone blocks and how to switch modes down here. So the first challenge we have to work through is that this farm will be hooked up to the blast chamber. So it needs to connect to that down there to tell the rest of the farms, hey, you can't turn on if I'm on because if we have 
block stream more than one block stream going into the last chamber at a time everything breaks absolutely everything to accomplish this i think the first thing we should actually do is find a slot for it in the main storage here because then we can have this on switch hook up to a bunch of other safety switches in there now where should we put it yeah, i kind of want to put it in like this section here but i've noticed this issue with the tree farms and these farms and all that kind of stuff i only have one hopper picking it up and this farm is faster than hopper speed we actually need two hoppers to keep up with the entire farm and there are complicated ways you can get um double speed item sorters but i think we should have two chests of basalt and cobblestone each and think about this now this could be a really big issue because we don't have enough slots for that many okay so i think i'm gonna put in in these two slots temporarily because we actually need to expand the storage because these are these are the chests in place but we don't have the hoppers or the redstone behind them so since we don't have enough chests for this i'm just gonna start out with these two it will be it'll overload the system but it won't like break or anything you know what i actually got a better idea what if we make it so these two slots are for cobblestone this one's for basalt because we're probably not going to need nearly as much basalt as cobblestone yeah i think that's definitely what i'm gonna do All right looks like the lights are working another issue i just realized we don't have enough slots out here to power this farm we need two one to switch the mode and one to turn it on all right it looks like we have room on either side so i think i might actually just expand it out so we'll have these two extra slots here and i think things are going to be shifted around at some point but i'm not going to do that right now okay so i think this should work out okay all right now those should be the two switches all done actually now they're all done and uh now we just should have to wire it up on the outside now all right, let's just give it a test Okay, that turns that one on and that turns that one on perfect all right looks like the safety switches are now in place to be honest this is starting to look really cool like this pattern we got going on pretty sick right and that should connect up the on switch here but now we need to work on this connecting to the safety switch over there so i think the best way to do this is to just power all of this entire piston line here uh when it turns on from the on switch and there we go the safety switch worked so now with these pistons pushed up we cannot turn on any of the other farms perfect <laughs> and that turned on the bone meal farm because i guess one of the farms is requesting bone meal right now oh wow i just recognized a huge issue with this the bone meal farm turned on when i simulated a tree farm being on that's and i was a little confused i was like i don't why would tree farms be requesting bone meal they should be kept up this one isn't because this one's not hooked up to that system up there. I'm gonna need to fix that at some point, that's bad. And also that is extremely enraging. Okay, with all the detours out of the way, let's continue with this. All right, so now I have an indicator light saying that's on. There would be basalt here, but I don't have any right now. So this is what we're gonna stick with. Now look, I know it doesn't look the best, but at this point, I'm kind of just trying to throw it together. I'll make it look better at a later time. But I think the next course of action is actually hooking up the block stream here, which, what it looks like shouldn't be too bad compared to other block streams. So all we have to do is make a zero tick piston when we're doing this. So basically we just have redstone torch here. And then depending on directionality, dust here, a block, a piston, and then another piston going over top. Now, depending on directionality, this might zero tick and might not. So as you can see, this isn't zero ticking. So what you have to do is you would then put another or you would change the piston to be on the bottom instead of on the top and then there you go it's fast all right and now all we have to do is push it down right here and i could just copy one of the designs i have up there so i just put a furnace here and then we put a comparator out this way and then we can put redstone dust Ooh, we don't have much room here but i think we might be able to get away with it we go this way we'll place the pistons right here and i think that would do it now if i place a block here oh well i actually also have to put 64 sticks in here so we have signal strength 5 from the comparator and then yep and then look at that it's going into the system and into the blast chamber and just in case we can do a full test here yep there we go all right so it's all hooked up so before we can run the farm, we actually need to hook up the sorting system here so we can collect the items. And which slots is it? It is this one and this one. 
And that would be up here. And it would be these two slots. Uh, but that's not right. This is not correct at all. The warp stems are over there. I think we could just replace these and it'll be okay. All right, so just replace the two items in there. And let me just see, do we have like... Oh my gosh, we have stems in here. That was completely by accident. I never, I never meant to have that happen. I guess you should probably transfer these over to the other chest. Oh. Yeah, I was trying to transfer these warp stems over and I just remembered that, uh... We don't have any room left, so I'm gonna just burn them all. Alright, and now we just gotta put the cobblestone items in there to indicate these are the cobblestone chests. And I should probably check the back shulker boxes. I see that there is, um... Crimson and warp stemmed in these, so I have to replace them real quick. That should be as easy as just triggering these really, really fast, these two. So if I trigger these two really quick, it should do it. And, um, that looks good. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. We now have some fresh, clean shulker boxes. With that, I think we are actually good to go to, uh, turn on the farm. When I place this down, it should turn on. And it looks like it's on. All right. It looks good. Wow, that is fast. Well, now isn't that a nice cool farm we have going? I think I'm going to fix all the issues that I found off camera. So in, so expanding the storage system, allowing this to switch to basalt mode, and then also fixing all the issues with the nether tree farm and the bone meal collection. So yeah, with that, I think I'm going to leave the video here. And I think in the next episode, we're going to be working on the hostile mob cap. And then the episode after that, I'm honestly not sure, because I think at that point we're going to start putting all of our effort into the massive 500 by 500 perimeter. Not really sure what I'm going to do there yet, because it's going to be a little bit hard to post videos and do that and have a project like that going on. But I'll find a way. So uh, with that, see you.